they trying to portray as if they're uh, Christ's apostles. But they're not. They're false apostles. Read on. Verse 14 of, of 2 Corinthians 11 chapter. And no marvel, for Satan himself for is who? For Satan himself. For Satan himself, read on. Is transformed into an angel of light. So now if, if, if the apostles is transformed into the apostles of Christ, it says no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. So the guy that you thinking is Jesus Christ as you go into them churches is actually Satan. And what I'm talking about, a lot of you have an image in your head of when you talk about Jesus Christ, I'm talking about that picture that's put up in most of these churches of that white image of Jesus Christ. That's what I'm talking about. This picture right here. That's exactly what I'm talking about. This is not the true image of Jesus Christ. This is actually the devil and the children of the devil, the sons of perdition. And I'm explaining what that means uh, as, we go, uh, as we go along in the scriptures. I'm explaining what that means by the son of perdition. But read that verse again. Verse 14 of 2 Corinthians 11 chapter. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. And Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light, which is Jesus Christ. Read on. Verse 15, therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. All these Catholic, so-called Roman Catholic priests supposed to be the ministers of righteousness? Then where's the homosexuality coming from? Where's the child molesting coming from? The uh, sodomy that's going on inside the church. They revealing themselves as the ministers of Satan. The true, the true ministers of righteousness are black and Hispanics, the 12 tribes of Israel, so-called Indians, descent. That's the true ministers of righteousness. All the males of our nation is supposed to be the priests ministering to God, ministering to Christ. All these so-called the people that you see calling themselves priests, they're the ministers of Satan, and their end is according to their works. In other words, what they do the scriptures tell you even a child is known by his doings. So what they do lets you know whether they are of God or whether they are of the devil. Now, would somebody of God molest the little boy? Did any of God's priests do that? Jesus Christ? Any of the Levites? Any of the prophets? Was they known for molesting little boys? Moses? Was they known for homosexuality? Okay. So let's go from there to uh, 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, and the third verse. 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, and the third verse. 2 Second, Second Corinthians, the fourth chapter, and the third verse. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Read on. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Again, let you know that this is Satan world, the God of this world. Christ said, the prince of this world cometh and have nothing to do with me. The God of this world is the spiritual demon Satan. That's the God. So when you go to church and you say, oh God, please, what God do you think you're praying to? <laughs> Christ already told you that the, he's not in this world. He has nothing to do with this world. In case you don't remember that, let's hold that for a minute and let's go back to that scripture. St. John's the 14th chapter and the 30th verse. St. John 14 and 30. And then from there, I need you to also get me... Uh, we're going to go back to 2 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, but I'll, I'll, I'll direct you. Okay. Let's read uh, St. John's 14 and 30 first. Hereafter, I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. So once Satan world was set up, Christ said nothing was going to be going on that was going to be about him. So when you start hearing about Jesus and God, who's that really about? It ain't about the true Jesus. It ain't about the true God and living God. So who is it really about? Then you may say, well, there's only one Jesus, but I'm sorry, the Bible doesn't tell you that. Tell you that somebody, yeah, there is only one real true Jesus, but it tells you that there's other people out there fronting, perpetrating a fraud, stealing identities, and trying to portray and make themselves as if they were Jesus Christ. Let's go back to 2 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, and let's let the word of God speak. 2 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, and the 4th verse. 2 Corinthians 11 and 4. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus. Read that again. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus. Preacheth another Jesus. So which Jesus are you worshiping? It said if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus. Read on. Whom we have not preached. Who the apostles have not preached. Let's just get one of the things that the apostles preached about the Jesus that they knew. The real Jesus. Let's get Revelation the first chapter. Let's get this real quick. 
Because I want to prove to you that that Jesus that's in your church is the other Jesus that wasn't preached by the true apostles of God. Let's get Revelations, the first chapter, and uh, read the first verse. Revelations 1 and 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. The revelation of Jesus Christ. The word revelate, to revelate all. Revelation means to reveal. The revealing of Jesus Christ. It is true, full divinity. Okay, let's get the 13th verse. Verse 13 of Revelation, the first chapter. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. The seven candlesticks, similar to something that we have here, this menorah that we have here, uh, represented the seven churches that was in Asia Minor, that was set up by the apostles of Christ. And Jesus Christ was standing in the midst of the seven candlesticks because that was representing that he was with all the churches that were set up by his apostles. Those are the only churches that Christ is with, the ones that were set up by his apostles. Another scripture in the book of Jeremiah tell you the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. He said these are lying words, that those are not God's temples. The true temples are all the temples that set up by the Israelite church of God and Jesus Christ worldwide. That's the one that Christ, those are the temples that Christ is standing in the midst of. All these other temples, Satan is in the midst of them. Every last one of them. And we're going to prove that. But read on. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot. Okay, he was seeing a vision of Jesus Christ. He had a garment on down to his feet. Read on. And gird about the paths with a golden girdle. Come on. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Now, I would like everybody to, to, again, take a good look at this picture of this other Jesus. While we read the Jesus, we read the description of the Jesus that was preached by the apostles. Read the 14th verse again. His head and his hairs were white like wool. The, the Jesus that was preached by the apostles' head and hairs were white like wool. Negro hair, just in case some of you don't understand what woolly hair means. So-called Negro hair. And it was fully white. Read on. As white as snow. And in case y'all don't know what that is, uh, who's the guy that had uh, one of these uh, old guys that I can refer to that had white uh, woolly hair? I think Frederick Douglass. You see a picture of him. He had white hair. His hair turned white. You see a lot of black men. I'm not talking about gray. I'm talking about white. White. Not gray. You have black men that have white hair. They don't use a dye. But Jesus Christ here was white and woolly. Read on. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Read on. And his feet like unto fine brass. Fine brass. Read on. As if they burned in the furnace. So now it's dealing with the color of Jesus Christ. It was letting you know that he's black. Everybody in the world knows that. I mean, that's, that's no secret. Everybody on the planet Earth knows Jesus Christ is black. When the so-called Jews went back to uh, uh, Israel in 1948, uh, a lot of, 1947, 1948, a lot of the uh, Arabs in that area would not accept them back into that land because when the Jews was expelled out of that land by their God, the true Israelites, they was expelled out of that land di diverse from ranging from a dark skin, chocolate brown to a light skin brown. That's what they looked like when they <laughs> left that land, when they was expelled out of that land by God. But when the so-called white man started coming back in that land, the Arabs said, what is this? We know, we, we know who you are. We know your identity. You're not the Jews. We cannot accept this. So what happened is George Bush, he had an operation which was called Operation Solomon, where he snuck a, a plane into Ethiopia and smuggled out about 100,000 Ethiopians. He snuck a couple of planes in there. And then them planes were called the Exodus. And he flew Ethiopian Jews into Israel so that there could be black Jews, black Jews in the land of Israel because everybody knew that there was a big deal. Everybody in the world knew and knows that the Jews are black. So there ain't no way that they could have got over being in Israel without having black Jews. So they didn't go get the real black Jews, which is the so-called Negroes, which was in slavery in America. They went to Ethiopia and got the fake Jews. They call Falassian Jews, which means the phony Jews, the false Jews. And they smuggled them over there in Israel. And they had a law passed at that time uh, the Israeli government had a law passed at that time, which they don't have no more, which was called the, uh, the, uh, the Exodus Law. That's what it was called, the Exodus Law. And that law stated that anybody that claims that they was an Israelite can, can get citizenship in the land of Israel. Anybody. All they had to do was come and say, my, my heritage is uh, of the nation of Israel. And they would be able to get citizenship. So what happened was the Arabs said, okay, well, I'm an Israelite. 
<laughs> <laughs> and they wanted citizenship, and that's when they abolished that uh, that law about uh, you can get citizenship. All you had to do was claim that you was an Israelite. Mm -hmm. But the point is, everybody in the world knew and knows that the Jews are black. So what's your problem? You go into a, cur a church and you're looking at, I was about to call it a curse. You know, Spirit brought that out. But you're going into a church and you're going in there and you're looking at uh, a white Jesus and you think that you're worshiping God. Are you crazy? So let's go back to 2 Corinthians, the second chapter, and the Spirit will bring it out again. 2 Corinthians, the second chapter, and the fourth verse. And let's get some understanding on that scripture that's being read. 2 Corinthians 2 and 4. For out of much affliction... I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians 11 and 4. Yes, sir. 2 Second, Corinthians 11 and 4. 2 Corinthians 11 and 4. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus... Another Jesus. Read on. Whom we have not preached... They did not talk about a Jesus that was white. <laughs> Nowhere in the Bible you're going to find that. They did not talk about a Jesus that no matter what you did, loved everybody. They talked about a Jesus. This story is in the Bible where Jesus beat people with a, with a, a, a whip... In God's temple. That's stories that's in the Bible. The Jesus that they're talking about in them church is talking about loving everybody. See, the reason why they're pushing that spirit of love, see, Satan is the one that's pushing that spirit. This hateful demon, this venomous, hateful demon has actually got the nerve to talk about love. Now, the reason he's pushing that love spirit is because he's trying to get everybody to get along and unite up under his program. He don't want you fighting each other. Because he wants you all to unite under and be one under his order, which is the new world order. I know a lot of you heard about that before. That's nothing new. The new world order is nothing that's new. Actually, the new world order is all old news. How old? It goes all the way back past the time of Noah. That's how old it is. It goes all the way back a little bit before the time of Noah. That's how old it is, the new world order. And the new world order been trying to been established ever since the book of Genesis. And Satan is finally, finally, now that Babylon the Great is set up, actually setting up this new world order. And we're going to go and we're going to prove all that in the scriptures. So we're just going to finish these, uh, these last remaining scriptures on, uh, on Jesus Christ. Read that again. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, Read on. whom we have not preached, or if he receive another spirit, which he have not received. That spirit of love, everybody. The scriptures don't tell you that. Okay. Read on. Or another gospel which ye have not accepted. Another gospel which ye have not accepted. The gospel did not tell you that God loves everybody. In Romans 9, 13, it tells you that God hates Esau. Right there, that doctrine is destroyed. There's no way you can love everybody if you hate somebody. Point. I mean, it's simple. That's Romans 9, 13, for you brothers and sisters that want to refer to that. Read on. Ye might well bear with men. Okay, now, from there, the scripture that we went to all this offer was, uh, let's go back to... Uh, uh, St. John's, the 14th chapter. Okay. That's what we went to all this offer. St. John's, the 14th chapter and the 30th verse. St. John 14, verse 30. Hereafter, I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. So all them scriptures that we were showing you is that even though they got churches in the society, they got ministers in this world, they got pictures of Jesus Christ in this world, that all that is referring and dealing with Satan. It has nothing to do with the true God and his anointed son has nothing to do with them. And the scriptures is verifying that. Now we're going to further go into the scriptures to prove to you that Satan is actually the one that's ruling the society. Let's get Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Ephesians, the sixth chapter. And we're going to start at the, uh, the 11th verse. In the 11th verse. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The whole armor of God is talking about his knowledge, his word, the Bible. And when you have this understanding, you'll be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Because Satan is attacking. Read on. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. See, this is not against flesh and blood. That's the mistake most people make. They think that this is about flesh and blood, that our problem is what a politician that's in office. So, you know what? Yo, go and do this because they work for us. And if they don't want to do it, we're going to get them out of office. We're going to get them out. Yeah, you get them out and another demon come back in. So what did you achieve? 